Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. In this episode, I'll be making another hybrid bowl using epoxy resin and an ash bowl blank. I began by mixing the resin. I had some left over from a previous project, so I decided to use it up. The colouring powder I'm using is the world's pinkest pink, made by Stuart Semple and supplied through Culture Hustle, the same people that make Black 3.0, the blackest black. I also added some of their pink lit, the world's glowiest glow pigment. The battery on my drill went flat, so I had to resort to mixing by hand, but I figured I only needed two batches of 450ml each to fill a casting. But note to self, make sure you charge the batteries next time they go flat. I mixed the second batch, coloured the same as the first, thoroughly by hand for four minutes and I added it to the casting. There was still some room for some more resin, so I mixed a smaller batch and added that to the rest. Now a quick bit of advice, the resin is sticky horrible stuff, so try to avoid spilling it. In this instance I would have been better off putting the casting in the pressure pot first, then topping up, but I didn't, and I ended up spilling resin all over my bench and in the pressure pot. Not great. And so with the casting in the pressure pot and the lid firmly tightened down, I added the usual 50 to 55 psi and I left it to cure for 72 hours in a warm room in my house. Having waxed the inside of the casting bowl, the resin came out with no problems. I used a chisel to take off the excess timber, mark the center, and drilled an eight millimeter hole for the woodworm screw. With the blank safely mounted on the lathe, it was time for some turning, using the EasyWood Tools mid-sized carbide cutter. If you have watched my previous resin project videos, you'll have heard me saying I need a bigger carbide cutter. Well, at the time of recording this video, I have ordered one, but I will have to wait for three weeks as it is out of stock. So fingers crossed, it will arrive soon. The recently installed negative rate cutter made easy work of removing streams of resin and as before there was hardly any chipping or shattering, though as I got deeper into the blank I could tell the resin was still a bit soft and I wasn't sure if I could continue so I considered leaving it to cure for a few more days. However, I persevered as I thought it would be a good experiment to see how the softer resin would behave through the turning process and I needn't to worry, it was fine, and in a lot of respects it was easier to work with. Alternated between the carbide cutter, the large negative rate scraper, the 3 8 bowl gouge and a bit of fine tuning from the skew chisel to gently expose the ash timber blank, I deliberately made sure the blank was not dead centre in the casting so I could achieve a sort of organic dripping effect where the resin meets the timber.
marked out the mortise and used the quarter inch parting tool to form the recess. I think I need to find a different approach to making a mortise. The parting tool really struggles and I get a lot of vibration and chatter. I've seen a dovetail cutter being used by other wood turners, which is maybe the answer. I used a diamond sharpening card to get a better cutting edge, which helped a little bit, but it was still not great. I used a 3 8 bowl gouge to finish the recess and form the foot, then I moved on to shaping the rest of the outside. I decided a key part of the design of the bowl was going to be a bold thick rim with a slight overhang, along with a slightly pinched middle. This was easy to form, and it adds something to what would have been a very plain looking bowl. With a final bit of fine tuning, the outside of the bowl was finished and ready for sanding. I'll skip the whole sanding process, but I sanded from 80 to 3000 grit. I cleaned down with denatured alcohol, applied sanding sealer, denibbed with non abrasive scotch pad, then applied two coats of Yorkshire grit fine abrasive paste, cleaned away with clean paper towel, then Novus fine scratch remover, and polished off with Novus plastic clean and shine. With the bowl turned around and safely mounted in the chuck and supported by the tailstock, I began hollowing out using the Easy Wood Tools carbide cutter, with a bit of action from the 3 8 bowl gouge. The colour in this one is a bit bold, and I have more bold colours from the same company to make some more resin projects in the future. That's something I'm looking forward to doing. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this episode. It will be a big help if you would subscribe and leave a like. It will help to grow the channel. And leave a comment, it's great getting feedback. So with that said, thank you very much and back to the video. Following out the center was a very easy process. The softish resin peeled off with no issues and I soon got down to the ash timber blank. I nibbled away at the piece in the center, removed the tailstock, broke the remaining stub out and continued to remove material down to the required depth. From this point on I was mainly removing material from the side of the bowl, getting the wall thickness down to where it was slightly translucent whilst retaining a good solid colour. I kept stopping the lathe to check the progress and from the angle I was at I could see the work light shining through the resin.
Once the sides were at the required thickness, I just had the rim to fine tune. There were a few low spots which needed to be turned out. You can see them when I stop the lathe. And with a final go with the carbide cutter and the skew chisel, the bowl was ready for sanding. The same as before, starting with 80 grit and working my way through to 3000 grit. Sanding finished, I once again cleaned down with denatured alcohol, then applied sanding sealer and denibbed with a non abrasive scotch pad. A bit of an extra step here, I used the coarse Yorkshire grit abrasive paste, one coat, to see if I got a better end result. Followed up with the Yorkshire Grit Fine Abrasive Paste, two coats, polished off to a shiny finish. And last but not least, I finished with a Novus Plastic Clean and Shine. That's another one finished. This was a fun little project, which has a trick up its sleeve. Pink Lit, the world's glowiest glow pigment. Well, here it is. With that, I'd just like to say I hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, a thumbs up will be great, and comments are always welcome. See you in the next one, and goodbye for now.